Hello everybody. In this lesson, we are going to learn about how to solve equations. Before we do that, first I'm going to have to tell you the difference between what an expression is versus what an equation is. So if we're talking about an expression, you've seen expressions before. Usually when we talk about things like polynomials and monomials and binomials and so on, an expression just has more than one term in it. So an example for an expression would be something like x plus 6. This is just a straight binomial with two terms, x and 6. Versus an equation. The difference between an expression and an equation is that an equation uses an equal sign. Because an equation means that we are going to solve for whatever our x actually is. So x, as you know, is just some kind of unknown number um, in, when we talk about algebra. Um, so the next thing that we definitely need to cover before we talk about equations is the definitions for what an operation and what a variable is. So in math, remember that when I use the term operation, we mean addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. Those are our operations in math. And next we need to know what a variable is. A variable is just a letter that represents a number. So I'm going to write letter that represents letter representing an unknown number. Digit whatever you want to say. Uh, and variables are not just x. Variables are any letter. They could be x, y, z, they could be a, b, c, etc. Okay, so let's talk about some things that we need to keep in mind when we are solving for, say, this type of equation. So the first thing that I have here is that the purpose of an equation is to solve for the variable by getting it alone. And what I mean by getting it alone, I mean there has to be nothing around it or attached to it. And you solve for the variable by getting it alone on either side of the equal sign which means it doesn't matter if your variable is on the left or the right side. We just want it to be alone. More often than not, though, we usually solve for the variable by having it on the, this side, the left side. Next, it's important to remember that whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. And what do I mean by one side? I mean one side of the equal sign. So whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you have to do the other side of the equal sign. Usually, how we do this is we do the opposite of the operation that is actually happening or going on. So, for example, if we see addition going on, we'll have to do subtraction, and we have to do it on both sides. And a good little tip that works most of the time is that when we're trying to solve for the variable, start by doing the inverse of, of BEMDAS. So if we're looking at our equation, see what we can subtract and add first, and then see what you can multiply and divide. This doesn't work all the time, there are several exceptions, but as you're starting out, this is kind of something that's kind of interesting and helpful to keep in mind. So, now that I've explained to you everything, what would be really awesome is to do some examples. So my first example was the one that I actually started this lesson with. It is an example of our first equation. So if we're keeping some of the tips and tricks that I had just said to you in the last uh, slide, um, if we're looking here, we want our x that we see here, our variable, to be all by itself. And to do that, we've got this 6, though, in front that's kind of blocking our x being alone. And so then remember what we said about doing the opposite of the operation that is actually going on. So addition is happening here. So instead, we're going to do the opposite of addition, and we are actually going to subtract 6 and subtract 6. Now, why do we do that? Well, what is 6 minus 6? 6 minus 6 is 0. Do we have to put this 0? No. But we know that the 6s are basically gone. And so my x is officially alone on one side. And remembering that whatever I did to the one side, I have to do to the other side. So then I have to do 12 minus 6. 
and 12 minus 6 is just 6. So I have just solved that x is equal to 6. Now, how do we check our work? Well, if I have x plus 6 is equal to 12 to start with, and I said that x was 6, if I plug in x, or if I replace uh, x with the 6 that I just solved for, is 6 plus 6 equal to 12? It is. And that's how you check your work for equations. Let's do another one that requires a bit more steps. Here I have 2x plus 4 is equal to 16. So again, we kind of do the opposite of, or the inverse of BEMDAS. And then we also need to remember that whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. So instead of starting with uh, multiplication and division, we're actually going to start with the addition and subtraction part. Our x here is being bounded by a 2 that's multiplied to it, but also a plus 4. So we're going to look at this plus 4 because it's addition, and we're going to essentially get rid of it. And to get rid of it, we basically need it to be equal to 0. So to make 4 equal to 0, we have to subtract 4. We're getting rid of it. And remember that whatever we do to one side, we do to the other, and we do subtract 4 on the other side as well. So if we rewrite what we have so far, we would now left with 2x because 4 minus 4 is 0, and that's equal to 16 minus 4, which is equal to 12. So the question I always ask my students are, are we done? But we're not done because we have this 2 that's kind of attached to the x. My other question that I usually ask my students is, what operation is happening that makes the 2 stuck to the x? In this case, it's multiplication. And remembering what I said earlier in this lesson, we have to do the opposite of the operation that is happening. The opposite of multiplication is division. So we are going to divide this side by 2. And whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So we're also going to do 12 divided by 2. And all we're left with, because 2 divided by 2 is 1, so you could put 1x if you want, but you don't have to. Uh, and 1x, or x, is equal to 6. And I'm just going to take out that 1 here, just that we see. And just like the first example, how do we check our work? Well, I told you that 2x plus 4 is equal to 16. And I just solved that x is equal to 6. So let's see if we replace it in, does this work? So if I have 2 times the x that I found plus 4 equals 16. 2 times 6 is 12. And now we're doing, we're doing real order of operations now. And 16 is equal to 16. So this, uh, this checks out. So this works. Over here, we have another little bit more complicated uh, equation that we're going to solve. You'll notice that the complicated part of this equation is that we have an x here and we have an x here. But you need to keep in mind that we need to bring our x's onto one side of the equal sign. So the first thing that we do when we see x's on either side of the equal sign is we should technically try to bring them together. And although it doesn't matter what side your x is on, we tend to favor having x on this side. So that way we can say x is equal to whatever it is equal to. To do that, i got to move this 3 over over here. And to do that, I'm going to have to subtract it. Because here we have addition, and the opposite of addition is subtraction. So, seeing what I get here, if I do minus 3x over here, that just goes away on, on, on the right side. But whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. Now, if I look at my left side over here, I have 5x minus 3x. I can't subtract these two because they are not like terms. So I will be left with 2x plus 2 is equal to 12 because 3x minus 3x is 0. If I look now and I check, are all my x's on one side? Yeah, they are. They are all on the left side. 
Now we'll focus more on trying to get rid of all of the things that are bounding it. So in this case, I have two things bounding my x, and they're both 2. Uh, what we have to do, though, and what I've mentioned again earlier, is um, basically we do the opposite of BEMDAS. And we see here that our 2 here is multiplying to the x, but we have a 2 here that's being added. So we're going to do the opposite of the operation, which is, in this case, subtraction. And we're going to do minus 2, minus 2 because whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. And then you're left with 2x is equal to 12 minus 2, which is 10. And our final, final step is, here we have a 2 still bounding our x with the operation of multiplication. And the opposite of multiplication is division. So we are going to divide by 2 and divide by 2, because whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. And we get that x or 1x, is equal to 5. And now, if we're a bit worried, we can always come here and check our answer. So here I'm saying that 5x plus 2 is equal to 3x plus 12. Is this right? Is this true? So I'm going to take what we had, and instead I'm going to replace my x with what we solved for. We solved that x was 5, so if I replace it inside the equation that I started with, will I get the same thing on both sides? On the first side, on the left side, I have 5 times 5, which is 25, plus 2. And then I have 3 times 5, which is 15, plus 12. 25 plus 2 is 27, and 15 plus 12 is also 27. Therefore, this checks out, and our x is for sure equal to 5. And those are some examples for solving E V equation. So I just want you to remember these four points that I mentioned at the very beginning of this lesson. You need to solve for the variable by getting it alone on either side of the equal sign. And whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. Another cool hint is that you also need to do the opposite of the operation that's happening. So if we're starting with something being added to my x, I'm going to subtract it. And another helpful tip that might not always work, but works most of the time, is that you should do the opposite or do the inverse of our order of operations, BEMDAS. So we did addition and subtraction before we did multiplication in all of these examples on this slide. And that is it for solving equations.